Balan Wonderworld is a video game developed by Arzest and Balan Company and published by Square Enix for the PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and PC in 2021. The game was directed by legendary Yuji Naka, creator of games like Sonic the Hedgehog, Nights into Dreams, and of course, the all-time classic Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg, about a boy and his giant egg. <laughs> Alongside Mr. Naka, the game was crafted by the legendary Naoto Oshima, artist and designer of games like Sonic the Hedgehog, Nights into Dreams, and of course the all-time classic Tommy Lasorda Baseball, about a man and his giant baseballs. <laughs> Jumping into the history of these two gentlemen would be a Herculean task, as the two of them have been involved in some of the biggest video game franchises ever. They were integral to Sega during the company's rise in the home console market and iconic figures in games development history. They're walking legend people! We won't take up your time laying out every single step of their careers. We know they're important. You know they're important. We all know Sonic R is important. Needless to say, when word came along that these creative titans would join forces alongside Square Enix to create an all-new platformer, fans were spin-dashing with excitement. Both of us? Same! But did we get great things? We'll have to check it out for ourselves. Strap on your fancy dancing shoes. We're gonna rhythmically wobble through loads of magical dreamscapes in Balan Wonderworld. First things first, let's pick a character. We choose boy with black hair, Leo Craig. Yes. You were graced with the game's opening cinematic, and it looks really, really good. Smooth animations, good model work, nice lighting and colors, all of this showcased alongside well-composed music? Hmm, this seems okay. We see our chosen character, Leo, dancing on the street near some other kids. Ooh, real good, makes you feel nice, and once you have that, you got all the spice. Righteous! The two other kids come over to congratulate Leo on being funky fresh. But Leo's once joyful expression melts away. He seems upset, avoiding everyone around. Did we miss something here? Well, why the sudden rain cloud? Leo seemed like he was having a blast. Could something have happened that we didn't see? <laughs> Funky fresh, all right. Well, whatever did happen, Leo mopes out of there with zero explanation. There's also a girl avatar to choose from. Her name is Emma Cole, and if you select her, you get a completely different intro. Here we see Emma slowly open a door. She discovers whispering maids atop the grand entrance of a mansion. Disturbed by this, the girl walks on, spying other secretive maids, and then more. They're everywhere, whispering. Emma must have had her own dirty dancing scenario that all the maids have been dealing with. She had Taco Bell last night. And watched Footloose. I had to scrub the chandelier. We're just guessing as to what's going on here, though, because each of our main characters has been introduced to us with a vague problem that is in no way properly explained. No matter which character you select, the intro cutscene plays out exactly the same after a certain point. They just shove both Leo and Emma into the same scene. This was confusing for us on our first playthrough because we didn't know who this random girl was that just showed up out of the blue. The kids both find little fluffy animals and follow them to a strange building with the words Balan Wonderworld above the entrance. They decide to enter and find themselves in the presence of a nightmare in a top hat. We're going to assume this is Balan. He's speaking some mysterious language. Lucky for us, there are subtitles. Unlucky for us, the subtitles explain nothing. Balan exclaims the children are missing a piece of their heart and that the show is now beginning. What follows is a flurry of insane visuals, including this. Did Balan just eat that kid? So far, we don't know who this is or what they want with these kids, but they're kind of giving off a Stranger Danger vibe. Stranger Danger! Stranger Danger! Is the point of the game to escape Wonderworld after being kidnapped by this freaking psychopath? Hmm. We don't know. The cutscene finishes and we're transported to a place called the Isle of Tims. This will be our hub world for the game. Here on this mystical floating island, you begin and end worlds called chapters that are broken into three acts each. It's simple. Beat a level, come back to the hub world, and then move on to the next. The actual levels themselves each has the same gameplay loop and objectives. So what can you expect from a level in Balan Wonderworld? The game's a 3D platformer collectathon. You'll run, jump, and explore each level looking for drop-shaped gems 
and golden balance statues while disposing of enemies. You have to collect enough balance statues to unlock more chapters, kind of like how stars worked in Super Mario 64. The statues are hidden throughout the level, so you must scour every corner to find them. But there's a catch. You can't do much in these stages as a plain run-of-the-mill kid. To really access every section of a level, you need to make use of costumes. Costumes are the game. Without them, you can't make progress. Not only do they open up whole sections of levels to you through traversal benefits, but they also allow you to fight. As we mentioned earlier, each chapter is made up of three acts, two platforming levels, and one boss battle. And there's also a bonus one after you beat the whole game, but we're not going to talk about that. After beating the boss, you get booted back to the Isle of Tim's to do it all again. Okay, the game sounds like a pretty generic character platformer. Maybe even one you'd like to play. But not all is as it seems in Wonder World, for beneath the game's bright, shiny surface lie something more. Well, let's say we have a lot to unpack. But first, let's talk about what we like here. The general art style. It's colorful and well rendered. Some of the characters look great. The environmental aesthetics. Each world has its own unique theme and it's well represented. The music. Well composed and orchestrated, high quality and well produced. The cutscenes. While not problem free, if you casually glance at them, they look pretty good. Those are nice things that we just said about this Balan Wonderworld game on a show that we have called just bad games. But a game can't rely solely on ear candy or flashy visuals. We need reliable, solid gameplay. And that's where Balan Wonderworld how do we put this? Sharks its pants while breakdancing? Bingo. We're gonna break down our issues with the game one by one so that we can best explain what's going on here. Issue one, costumes. Yes, the costumes. Balance core gameplay mechanic. You collect them in floating costume boxes scattered around each level. But before you can collect them, they need to be unlocked. In Balan, you can't just pick up an ability. What do you think this is? Sonic the Hedgehog? They make you collect a key first and then they they let you access the costume, turning what could be an immediate moment of fun discovery into a tiny, dull scavenger hunt. It's not so bad the first few times you do this, but you'll likely be doing this hundreds of times throughout the game. Keys are sometimes lazily placed right beside the costume box, but they can also be slightly hidden. In a game where utilizing costumes is an absolute necessity, hunting for keys or forgetting you don't have a key gets old real quick. When you do collect a costume, it goes into your HUD. You're able to keep three at a time, which you can rotate is needed. Not only do these costumes allow you to use different abilities, but they also act as your health system. If you get hurt in your default kid form, you get booted back to your last checkpoint. But if you get hurt while wearing a costume, you lose the costume and transform to the next costume in your inventory or back into your kid form if you have no costumes remaining. This means that if you're using a costume for a particular ability or benefit, that immediately goes away when you take damage. Because when you unlock a costume, you don't unlock access forever, you just unlock that one copy. But the game does let you stock up on multiple of the same costume. So if you're smart, you'll farm costumes. Just wait for the boxes and keys to respawn over and over again. Gives you plenty of time to reflect <laughs> on what you've been doing with your life. <laughs> Uh, but believe it or not, actually using these costumes is just as soul-sucking. Now, there's over 80 in the whole game, and 80, 80 is just too many. There are so many costumes that the game sometimes won't even introduce them to you properly. Once we collected a costume for the first time during a boss battle, and we had no idea what ability it gave us. The introduction animation that normally would teach us didn't play. 80 plus costumes that are all unique and useful, well, that would be pretty cool. The thing is, though, several of these special getups are in no way necessary. Some costumes are incredibly useless, and others are just insultingly similar. The Iron Apollo costume, for instance, moves like mud. It's ultra, super, duper slow. It can't jump quickly, but it can use a rocket blast to move painstakingly slowly upwards. It's so slow that you can't really use it as a reliable attack. There are two versions of this. The game does not need two versions of this. But why even consider consider using it when there's another costume that levitates you much, much faster. Here's the Lucky Egg costume. It attracts nearby collectibles, but comes with a caveat. If you fall or jump with it, 
the costume breaks, erasing it from your inventory. But wait, here's the lucky chicken costume that has the exact same ability, only you don't have to worry about it breaking from a fall or a jump. It completely negates any reason for the stupid egg costume to exist. Then there's the Gear Prince and Gear King, which allow you to interact with gear boxes around the world. But they each activate a different sized gear. Why not just make a single gear type instead of multiple? Why would you make two of these mostly useless costumes? There is a costume that has a light bulb on its head that turns on and off by itself. That's its superpower. Lighting up a room sometimes, but not always. You're supposed to use it in maze sections shrouded in darkness. Why make the costume turn on and off by itself when it could just stay on at all times? If that's what you need, then the game has you covered. We've got this costume with a flame on its head flickering at all times. Surely this would light the path. You've gotta be kidding me. The metal bad boy, Happy Horn, and Amadeus costumes are virtually identical. They utilize the same platforms to play a song that earns a pitiful amount of drops. We only need one of these. There are too many costumes that just do the same thing, like float or do a ground pound attack. We can only use one at a time. Why include so many? However, they did manage to include some unique abilities, like Telepotter. This costume replaces jumping with the ability to teleport you short distances in the direction you're facing. Ah! It can be problematic. Or there's Key Mouse. It's only ability, unlock other costume boxes. Oh, oh, you heard us right. A costume that itself unlocks other costumes. The thing about Key Mouse is it's useless. You can already collect as many keys as you want if you just farm the keys. But our favorite costume, Box Fox. Box Fox. You become an invincible box, randomly. Box Fox. And seeing as how these costumes are the main game mechanic, you'd hope that you'd be easily able to jump in and out of them, taking advantage of their abilities however and whenever you want. But you'd be disappointed. Firstly, if you need to change in a hurry, yeah, good luck with that. The changing animation is slow. And it can only be done on solid ground. And then, like Box Fox, some don't give you control over their attack or action. They just randomly start firing projectiles or box whenever they feel like it. Or there are costumes that have attacks that you can control, but are way too slow to be of any use. Like with Hydrant Man, you have to stay in one place waiting for his ability to power up. Because of this, you can't avoid incoming attacks. The cherry on top is that when the ability is finally charged, it's almost impossible to aim properly. And then some costumes take away your jump. They make it so your character can't jump in a platforming game. Sometimes the ability that was important enough to take away your jump doesn't even work properly. There are clearly a lot of problems with the basic costume mechanics, but what's worse still is how these lackluster duds interact with their surroundings. Issue two, levels. The levels in Balan Wonderworld are functionally broken in many ways. Firstly, they don't seem to be designed to mesh well with the costume system. Here, we frustratingly got stuck with the Iron Apollo costume during a platforming section. With no way to revert back to our kid form, we were forced to move forward and jump over a tiny gap without touching the lava below. Well, Apollo can't move fast and can't jump forward with momentum. So this happened. The problem here is they tried to make all levels playable with all the costumes, but you can't do that. Not well, anyways. There was no way to implement 80 different playable characters in all situations without any issues. How do we know the game wants us to use all the different costumes? Because Balan Wonderworld uses backtracking. <clears throat> to collect all the required balance statues, you will have to return to previous levels with the new costumes you've picked up to access otherwise hidden areas. And sure, backtracking in and of itself isn't terrible, Many games use it in rewarding ways, boosting a satisfying feeling of progression, problem resolution, or putting a twist on old spaces and ideas. But not here. Different abilities are shoehorned in to create the illusion of varied gameplay, and playing these levels with costumes that weren't play tested for them leads to frustrating problems. Backtracking through Balan makes it painfully obvious that there was no clear vision when they were designing each of the levels. It's more of a shotgun approach. It's a shame because a more curated style could have made these levels 
levels a lot more satisfying to complete. There was such little attention paid to the abilities placed in the levels that you can easily finish some worlds and miss unlocking costumes in them. In a game focused, first and foremost, on the importance of costumes. Why would you do that? These levels are so poorly designed that they don't even properly teach the player how the basic gameplay systems work. Like these stupid Tims. You see them follow you around with no idea what function they serve. And then when you finish an act, they chant at the end gate and unlock it. But in one instance, we couldn't finish the level because the end gate tree thing wouldn't activate. We realized the Tims were missing. Well, you can lose Tims if they've been eaten by these plants. Why didn't we notice this earlier? Because the game didn't show it happening. Turns out these carnivorous flora will only eat Tims if you're not looking directly at them. Like here, we tried tempting a plant with a Tim buffet and nothing happens. Then we rotate the camera away from the plant, then bam, it suddenly has a squirming treat in its jaws. They already don't explain how the Tims work in general. Then they hide important events from the player like a Tim getting Tim napped. Are the developers intentionally trying to mess with us? We only noticed this was happening because somewhere in the distance, we heard this. But if you don't know what's going on, then that sound literally means nothing to you. When the Tims get eaten, you need to save them by jumping on the flowers. If you don't, they won't follow you to the end of the stage and activate the exit. The game never tells you any of this. You have to keep an eye on these fluff balls and make sure they get to the end okay. It's an escort mission. Every level is an escort mission. They chose to make the game this way, but then there are problems that are happy accidents, otherwise known as bugs. Here we encountered a Balan hat, which typically activates a mini game, but for some unknown reason, the hat wouldn't activate properly. Great. On the Isle of Tims, one of our little friends is locked in a cycle, forever trying to eat a drop, but never actually finishing. Come on, dude, we've got places to go. Eat! In the game, sometimes cutscene characters from individual chapters show up as these titans in the world, like gigantic theme reminder decorations. Yes, this is weird, but they're supposed to be there. Also, they're supposed to vanish when you approach them, except sometimes they don't vanish. Bugs show up in the costumes too, like with Ladder Man. His ladders normally help you climb, but in some places they phase through solid objects over and over. Sometimes levels are so badly designed that certain costumes just completely undermine any challenges that were originally intended. For example, sometimes at the end of a level, this evil Balan looking character shows up and spawns a mini boss. You have to fight it to pass through to the end gate. Well, with this costume, you can walk right over the wall, completely avoiding the fight. There's also a ghost costume in the game. Hey, it's, it's the, the ghost, ghost of the money we wasted on Balan Wonder Woman. World. My ability is I demean you for your purchasing decisions. <laughs> uh, wrong, wrong ghost. ghost. In the fire hall level, with this ghost costume, whatever challenge was originally intended with not being able to touch the lava is completely negated by floating. This feels like an accident. Why make a costume that makes your level design completely irrelevant? It's actually a bit ironic that the ghost costume breaks the difficulty in this specific level because of that classic film that combines ghosts with a firefighter backdrop, Ghostbusters. <laughs> and you know what movie's classic score shows up in this level? Ghostbusters. No, it's not the exact same tune, but the similarity is undeniable. Yup, the levels in Balan Wonderworld have flaws in the way that they're set up, in the glitches they hold, and in the way that costumes interact with them. But how you actually move through those levels, <laughs> now that's going one notch worse. Issue three, controls. As odd as this sounds, Balan Wonderworld has controls that are overly simple and complicated at the same time. There's only one action button and every face button replicates that one action in the game. One button action sounds simple enough, but what that action button does always changes. One action button that is never the same sounds complicated, and especially complicated in combat. Instead, your character might launch out a long frog tongue or enter an up-close zoom view of the enemies, both of which do nothing to fend off attackers. What do you do? Well, if you happen to have another costume in your inventory, you can change and hopefully those have the ability to help you fight or at least 
least jump away from trouble. Otherwise, tough luck. You can't even switch back to your regular jump capable kid form for a quick getaway. Not without taking damage, that is. You'll quickly start avoiding these lame and underwhelming costumes in favor of ones that at least do something useful with the game's single action button. This one action button mechanic has been described as a simplification of controls, but one action button does not simplify this game. Not when necessary functions like jumping and defending yourself are sacrificed in favor of so-called simplicity. Heck, this problem is present in the main menu way before actual gameplay. Every face button does the same action. There's no back button. You scroll to the end of every menu and choose an icon to do something as simple as go back. Just let us use another button for crying out loud. We got plenty of them. With all that said, it's time we talked about another head scratcher that makes use of the single action control system. And that's issue four, Balan Bouts. A Balan Bout is a type of bonus stage within levels. They're designed to hand out Balan statues. Some levels have more than others, but they're all very similar. Each one offers a series of quick time button prompts that require you to hit the action button on time or hit it repeatedly really, really fast. Your performance is graded at the end of the event on a scale from excellent to oops. These get mighty repetitive mighty quickly. But this doesn't mean they're easy. Sometimes the hit detection feels off, like your button press is registered either later or sooner than it actually was. And unfortunately, if you miss just one excellent rating, that means no balance statue. Oh, and you only get one chance to win. If you lose, you'll have to come back. No, not by restarting the level. You'll have to beat the world boss, restart the level, find the balance bout, and repeat the process again until you get a 100% excellent run. Adding to the frustration, the further in the game you get, the longer the bouts become. That means more chances to screw up. Believe us, you will fail. When retrying each bout requires so many hoops to jump through, failing stings. Balan bouts quickly feel like unnecessarily frustrating game padding, but they're not the only despicable side quest mini games here. There's also soccer, baseball, bowling, and golf. Each game plays in three rounds with no practice mode beforehand, which is bad since each one has awful physics and timing. They'll place obstacles in your path like with bowling, which will completely throw off your aim. It's always a crapshoot. Luckily, these sports outings aren't connected to balance statues. They offer drops that kind of feel pointless. Speaking, Speaking of, of pointless, pointless Issue 5, Plot and Cutscenes. Let's talk about the game's cinematics again for a moment. We mentioned earlier how they look great for the most part. It's true, but the more you watch, you start to notice some odd choices. Check this out. In several scenes where there's supposed to be a crowd, they've used what I can only describe as bowling pin people instead of actual models. Despite the fact that in this scene, they actually used real people. Bowling pin standees may have been intentional, but we don't know for sure. Effort is all over the place with this title. Take the game's opening, for example. They spent time rendering out cutscenes for each of the eight main characters you can play as. But the character designs are just palette swaps of a generic male and female character. Same models, different hair color. Repeating the same assets over and over and just changing the color? Who, Who would, would do, do that? that? To add insult to injury, these cutscenes lose impact because they rely almost entirely on characters emoting. We're not told anything, though, through narration or subtitles. Makes me long for the cutscenes in The Quiet Man. At least we got fluid character movement and could pretend we knew what characters were saying. Balan will be remembered as a classic. Never mind. The confusing thing is Balan Wonderworld does choose to use dialogue sometimes. The opening and ending cinematics use a gibberish language that fans have dubbed Balanese. This is then supplemented with subtitles. <laughs> But the scenes you see during actual gameplay contain no dialogue, Balinese or otherwise, and they're not always the most easy emotional journeys to follow. The visuals implement a lot of symbolism and metaphor. They might look cool, but can be ineffective at telling a concise story. They could have kept the Balinese language and just used subtitles to convey what's going on. Heck, if you can write gibberish song lyrics, you can write gibberish conversations. That's right, each world victory is celebrated with a musical number sung in this made up language. Whole catchy songs play out that mean nothing. You paid full price for this! Maybe they should have taken the time they used to record English versions of those songs and put it towards cutscene dialogue. Wow. 
What? Oh yeah. All of the songs in Balam Wonderworld have English translations. They play as a reward if you finish a world with all the Balan statues collected. Of course they did that. Why put time and effort into telling the actual story of the game? These songs with the emotional depth of a bumper sticker needed to be fully recorded twice. Sure, not every game requires a lot of attention to a story, but if you're gonna go to the effort of giving your game a narrative, at least give the player something to work with. They could have skipped a story altogether and put that time towards designing Issue 6 Multiplayer! Balan Wonderworld? has co-op. And you don't want to play it. It introduces a tidal wave of new issues into the game, like how there's only one camera that follows the first player, meaning that if player two decides to run off for a moment, there's a high likelihood that they'll blindly tumble to their death. They don't even have to die, just get too far away. They'll blip out of existence and respawn close to player one. Not the most fluid gameplay mechanic, but they did attempt to solve this. You see, when both players stand close to each other, they get bound together with some kind of force field. This allows the characters to be moved in tandem with one player's inputs. The best a multiplayer team behind Balan could come up with is one where the second player doesn't need to control their character in the slightest. Smart. Mm. And things get even more head-scratchingly weird when costumes are thrown in the mix. You each collect a different costume in the levels, forcing you both to fight over what can be found in the stage. There usually aren't enough costumes to go around, though. This is really annoying in boss fights where the costumes are most needed. An unlocked costume box sometimes won't respawn for player two if player one has the costume in their HUD. Player one has to get hit and lose a costume before it will respawn. So until then, player two can't do much except sit back and let player one do all the work. Which maybe isn't so bad because playing a chaotic boss battle with this messed up camera is a nightmare. Are we finished yet? Nope. There's one more chunk of the Balan Wonderworld experience that we need to dig into. Color Drops and Tims. Bonus issue, Color Drops and Tims. Throughout all the levels, there are various color drop shaped gems you need to collect. As we saw earlier, Tims love to eat these things in the hub world. It's a cute, but ultimately time consuming affair because you have to watch them devour the drops in real time before laying down more for them to eat. If you feed the Tims enough drops, they build structures to interact with like trampolines, and something called the Tower o Tims. These structures have no purpose. They in no way impact your progression through the game. You, as the player, can't even interact with them. So why go to the hassle of collecting drops and feeding Tims? Well, because if you don't, you won't be able to unlock the hidden Balan costume. If this costume sounds interesting to you, great! Let's talk about how you get it. You have to feed a single Tim enough colored drops that it spawns three different colored badges, red, blue, and purple. Then you pick another Tim and do the same, but continue to feed it drops until it gets really big. You throw the small Tim at the big one to breed a Tim egg that hopefully hatches a crowned Tim. It's randomized, so it may take a few tries. Pro tip! Save your progress and keep exiting and reloading until it finally works! But we're not done yet! You also have to scour levels looking for rainbow drops. These are rare and difficult to find. Accumulating enough of them can take a while. Pro tip! Let the game break itself so you can get as many rainbow drops as you need with very little effort. You feed these rainbow drops to a statue until its meter fills up. Then you feed it your crowned Tim, and the statue turns into this epic hulking negative. You ride this Tim to a floating island in the sky, and there you find the Balan costume. And the costume? It gives you the ability to fly and glide across virtually every level, completely bypassing everything and breaking their already broken design. Pro tip, don't play this game. Why would you want to play this horrible game for so long to unlock a costume that essentially lets you glide through levels you've already played to death? I don't know, but it's at least a symbol of overcoming the trial, pain, and... Did we just... Did we just lose the Balan costume because of a game error? Well, sh this game should have been better. And for the first time on Just Bad, we're going to show you exactly how to fix it. How to fix this broken wonder world. Costumes. Get rid of the bloat. Focus on smaller amounts, like one per world. No need to double up on redundant transformations. Lucky Egg, smash it to pieces. Iron Apollo, blast off, buckaroo. Key Mouse? 
Off, Key Mouse. We already have costumes that do what these do and better. And in the case of Key Mouse, he can go suck a lucky egg because we have already decided that this game needs to ditch the keys. You should be able to collect a costume willy nilly and always have access to it. But if you always have access to the costumes, how can the health system work? Revamp it. Use a health system that is recharged every time you collect a certain number of drops. Give added purpose to collecting them beyond the slop show that is getting the Balan costume. Let Levels. All the levels and boss fights should focus mainly on world-specific costumes. Keep it simple while allowing the chance to wring out as many cool ideas from abilities as possible. Controls! Jump button! We need it! Now! Have one button to use special abilities and a second button to jump. It worked in 1985 and it works today. Balan Bouts! Multiplayer! No! no. <clears throat> Story. Present the game in a real language, either spoken or with subtitles. This will make the plot easier to follow and give players a connection with what's going on. Oh, while we're on better explanations, introduce the game's villain. This sinister Valen over here, we need to know what they're all about. We beat the game and still don't know what's up. By the way, yes. We know there's a novelization of Balan Wonderworld, and no, we didn't read it. If it was truly important, they should have included it with the game. Couldn't hurt to have a costume carousel, except accessible on the fly that allowed players to easily hop through all the abilities. But I think that's about it. And that's how you easily make Balan Wonderworld a worthwhile experience. You know the sad part? A better Balan style game exists. Yeah, just play Super Mario Odyssey. It's essentially the same type of game, but tuned to perfection. The accessible abilities are woven perfectly into the designs of the game's beautiful and creative worlds. And you even got eyes on a hat. Super. Balan Wonderworld is a dreadful experience, something that becomes more apparent the more you play it. We can't deny that a massive amount of effort went into this game, and though we believe many parts weren't well thought out, the game isn't a work of laziness. If anything, it tries too hard in all the wrong places. Not one costume, not one level, not one element was designed as well as the first three Sonic the Hedgehog games, which for us is surprising considering who was involved. While certain visual aspects of this game shine and some ideas show glimpses of creativity, Balan Wonderworld at the end of the day is a video game, an interactive experience, and as a game, well, it's just bad.